Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be looking at the market cycle return on investment. We're gonna be doing so with measuring it from the market cycle bottom and as measured from the halving, and we're gonna be doing an in-trading view this time, okay? So if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we've talked extensively about Bitcoin's market cycles, okay? And, and when we look at them, when we look at them, we can see that they all have their own characteristics, right? The first one was more or less straight up, okay? The second one was a double peak cycle. The third one was not, it wasn't straight up, but it was more so a methodical test of the 20 week moving average the in, entire way up. We would go up a few months and then we'd go back down and test the 20 week. We'd go up a few months and we'd go back down and test the 20 week. And then so far, this cycle has been a stretched out version of 2013 if you measure it from the cycle bottom, okay? If you measure it from the cycle bottom. Now, if you just measure it from say the beginning of 2021, there are more similarities between say 2013 and 2021, but I would argue it's still a stretched out version of 2013, the current cycle at the very least. For all we know, guys, it could be a triple peak cycle, all right? I think that if you get super deterministic about anything, it's probably not going to work out very well. If you are going to be deterministic about anything, it should be that Bitcoin turns up with time. Uh, that's what I would say if you're going to be deterministic about anything, it should be. Uh, but let's just let's just go from here. So if we overlay these market cycle ROIs, right? This is what you get, right? You take you just take the prior cycles, you overlay them down to the day, and then this is what you get. And if you guys remember back to April and May when the value of Bitcoin or the price of Bitcoin was at 60k or so, I said back then, look guys. We're probably going to get a summer lull. We're ahead of schedule. We need to get back on the other side of this chart, okay? Or of this, of, of the, yeah, of this line. This the cycle ROI for, for the third market cycle. And in fact, we did get that summer lull three to six months. In fact, if you measure this out from, from when we had this peak until when we put in a new peak, it was about six months, right? About 190 days or so. So almost exactly six months between when we started going down and then when we were able to put in a new all-time high, okay? So we said, look, we think that we are ahead of schedule, okay? Not just based on this, but also based on the risk levels. We think we're ahead of schedule. We need to come back down and test some of these lower prices because we just went through them too quickly. You know, we haven't really been testing the 20 week. Are we too far gone? We never really test the 30 or 40K that much. We just blew right past them. Do we really have this, the fuel to get us to 100K without going back to some of these lower prices and proving that we can we can hold the mass support and then eventually get above the 20 week again and then hold the line. And then once we do that, then we should be looking pretty good, okay? Now, you look at this chart, this is the current market cycle ROI that we are in. You can see that if we attract 2011, Bitcoin would have already gone to, what is that? $1.9 million by August of 2019. We know it didn't do that. If we were tracking the one from 2013, it would have gone to $1.6 million by December 2020. We know it didn't do that. If we were tracking the last market cycle, the one in 2017, we would already, if you go to the current time, we should already be at around $300,000. Again, this is measuring it from the market cycle bottom, right? Measuring it from the market cycle bottom. We'll measure from the halving in a minute. I know a lot of people like to measure from the halving and, I, and we'll respect that and we'll show that as well. But look, you can see clearly that we just are not keeping pace with the last cycle. Now, some of you might say, well, look, I mean, this actually looks pretty close to this cycle. And you're right, right? I mean, you're not, you're not wrong. It's not, it's not like we can say that we're all the way down here, but Another thing to think about, is this a logarithmic scale, okay? For us to actually be on pace with the last cycle, Bitcoin should already be trading at several hundred thousand dollars, okay, several hundred thousand. Our logarithmic scales have a way of masking this. And, and one way we can, we can really put this into perspective is to switch it to a linear scale, okay? This shows the market cycle ROI for cycle one, for cycle two, for cycle three. This one over here is cycle four. This is the one we're currently in. All the gains that Bitcoin has experienced this market cycle, all this roller coaster of emotions that Bitcoin has taken us on from $3,100 up to $64,000, back down to $29,000, back up to $69,000, and right now we're trading for just below $66,000. All of that is this tiny little squiggle that you can barely see down here. And it goes all the way back, right? It's that tiny little squiggle. Okay, so 
that should put things into perspective. Okay, when we talk about diminishing returns, look, I don't want the cycle returns to diminish. Like, I'd love for Bitcoin to go to four or $500,000 this market cycle. I just want to make sure that I don't have over realistic or over zealous um, you know, expectations and then to be disappointed later on. I would say that if Bitcoin is not going to have diminishing returns, then the way to do that is if the cycle just gets extended incredibly long. Okay, and I mean, I, I mean, like we're not even close to the end of it. But but right now, right now, this should help show why we talk about about the diminishing returns. Again, we should already have been at two million dollars almost if we were following cycle one. We should have already been at one point six million dollars following cycle two. Following cycle three, we should have already been at at you know three hundred thousand dollars or so. And then currently, we're currently coming in at around 65.9K, all right? So this is the cycle we're in down here. And then this is the one she tells you not to worry about, right? So let's go look at the same thing, right? The same thing, but as measured from the halving, all right? Let's switch this back to a log scale so we can actually see what's going on. Okay, so then this one is measuring it from the halving. And this is another reason we speculated that we needed to have a summer lull, is that we were too far, right? We we're too far ahead of schedule and that we needed to come back down, regroup, and that the cycle would lengthen from the halving and the market cycle bottom, right? So this was one of the things that helped identify, that helped me identify that we would not have a market cycle peak in April, right, at 64K. We would not have a market cycle peak in September at, at you know, several hundred thousand dollars. Um, and, and, and the reason is just to say, look, as we, as we continue to scale up Bitcoin's market cap, okay, it's going to become harder and harder to, to push higher. That doesn't mean we can't push higher, and the returns that Bitcoin gives are probably going to be better than almost, you know, most stocks that you'll find, right? They're still going to be better. Even diminishing returns in Bitcoin are still better than most returns in other asset classes. Okay, you have to consider that, right? So... When we look at this, we say, well, we've already lengthened from the halving, right? The halving, if we were not gonna lengthen from the halving, we should have already put in a market cycle peak in October. But in fact, we didn't put in a market cycle peak in October. We're putting in new all-time highs today, in fact. The, the same day that I'm making this video, earlier today, Bitcoin went to around 69K. Yeah, we've dropped down about $3,000 since then, but you can see that Bitcoin is still putting in new all-time highs, all right? So what do we know? Well, we can see that the cycle has in fact lengthened. And why shouldn't it lengthen, right? Why shouldn't it? I mean, we, we speculated that it would. We could see that the time after the first cycle having that lengthened, okay? So the second one lengthened from, or sorry, the second one lengthened from the first one. So then why wouldn't the third one lengthen? Again, is it dubious extrapolation from, from literally a single data point? And you might say two data points. Well, no, it, two data points make one data point in the sense that it's lengthening, right? Is it dubious extrapolation from, from basically one data point? Yeah, it is. But did it work out and, and help us identify that this, in fact, was not the market cycle peak? But also, it helped us identify that this was just going to be a three to six month lull, not a, a multi-year bear market, right? Did it help us identify that? Yes. Therefore, I would still argue that dubious speculation is still somewhat merited. Now, if you take a look at this and see how long it lengthened, that could be something else to look at. This one, from the first cycle to the second one, it lengthened by approximately 161 days. Unfortunately, there's no trend to base it on there. We can go out 161 days from here, and we can see that that would get us out until March of 2022, if it were to lengthen by the same amount. But the problem is, is we don't know if it's just going to lengthen by the same amount, if it's gonna be lengthened by a smaller amount or a larger amount. But we can say is that it looks like it lengthens, right? It looks like it lengthens. And, and that we want to be on the lookout for, you know, for, for, for manic times in crypto, you know, as we, as we continue on this market cycle, because the next time we have a manic time, it could be the market cycle top, right? It could be. Now, back in April, I didn't think it was, and I was pretty vocal about that. I said, look, guys, I don't think this is a market cycle top. I think it's a local top. In order to have a double peak cycle, you have to have a first peak, right? You have to have a first peak to have a double peak cycle. So I didn't think, you know, I didn't think the, the one in April was a market cycle top. I said it was a local top. We were proven correct on that now, of course. But then it begs the question, well, what about the next manic phase? Is that a market cycle top? I would say it depends on how high we go, right? It depends on how high we go. And it also depends on when it happens, right? It depends on when it happens. So 
for now, as long as Bitcoin's not going into parabolic mania mode, where we're just, you know, shooting up the wristbands or, you know, just putting in gains that are hard to even keep track of, I still would argue that time is on our side, right? Time is on our side. And if you go back and, and look at the other one, where we look at as measured from just the market cycle bottom, and then we hide the having ones, and then we look to see how long those lengthened, okay? You can say, all right, well, this, this one to here was lengthened by approximately 473 days. This one, though, to the next one was only lengthened by 330 days, right? So 473 to 330. So what do you notice here? Well, in this example, you're actually seeing the cycles lengthen, but they're lengthening at a decreased rate, right? So you do have one extra data point. If we were to dubiously speculate, let's just say if it went out 473 days, from here, or actually, no, we shouldn't measure it from here. We should measure it from when it actually, when it actually will lengthen, which the market cycle has not yet lengthened from the market cycle bottom, right? But if we were to go out 473 days, which is what the, the diff distance between one and two would be, that would actually have us going out till 2023. If we go out 330 days, okay, which is after the, between cycle two and cycle three, that would put us out sometime in, in you know, September, September of, of 2022. Um, so maybe those September predictions will be right, right? Um, and then if um, if we lengthened at a at a diminished rate in terms of the you know going last, this was 473, this was 330. Let's say it lengthens by I don't know 200 days, 250 days. That'll put us out in the summer of 2022. Okay, so you know a lot of us like to dubiously speculate on what's going to happen in crypto, but at the end of the day, no one really knows what's going to happen. Let me be clear. The more confident someone is in their prediction, the probably less serious you should take them, to be completely honest. Did I know that Bitcoin was going to go to 64K in April? No, I didn't. Like, I didn't know that. Uh, you know, when we were trading it at, at 16K, you know, we said, okay, well, we could go up, right? We could go to these higher prices. And we, when we hit 20K or 30K, we looked at a video saying, can we go to 50K? And you know, based on the extension for the 20 week and whatnot, we said, yeah, it's in the cards. But did I know it was gonna go to 64K? I had no idea. I had no idea it was gonna go to 64K. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is that it's more important, you know, on how you react to the market, right? I think it's a lot more important on how you react to the market, not to say, pin it down to a, a very specific day, okay? It's more important to say, if this happens, then I will do this. If it doesn't happen, then I won't do that. Okay, that, that's more or less the, the, the way I, I, I navigate the market. Again, when Bitcoin went to, you know, to the, to the first local top back in April, I had sold 87% of my Bitcoin that was in short, or that was in long-term capital gains territory, 87%. Why? Because the risk level was in the 0.94 risk level. I mean, it was at the 0.94 risk level and we could only go to one. Right? I mean, it was, it was, the risk level was as high as it was in, it basically as high as it was in December of 2017. You might say, well, how's that? I mean, we haven't seen the same gains. Yeah, well, the risk metric, again, it does count, account for diminishing returns, right? It accounts for diminishing returns, which a lot of metrics don't, okay? But the diminishing returns is a function of time, okay? It's a function of time. So that, I think that was why it was actually successful and, and some of the other ones weren't because they, just, they, they assume that just because Bitcoin went up, you know, a certain amount in a certain period of time in a prior cycle that it can do that in the next cycle as well. I look at these charts and say, you know what? What do I see? It looks like the cycles lengthen. It looks like we have diminishing returns. That's what I can note. That's all I really know, right? And when we everything else we dubiously speculate about, all right? Everything else is just pure dubious speculation. Even that's dubious speculation. We've been proven right on not it being the market cycle top from the having because we already put in a, you know, we already put in a, a new all-time high, in fact. So we know that we know that as measured from, from that, we, are, um, we were correct. But you know something we're not yet correct about? We don't yet know, we don't yet know if it's going to lengthen from the market cycle bottom yet, right? We don't know that yet. It could, I think it will, but we don't know until we actually come to that point in time and prove it, right? You gotta prove it. Until then, it's just, again, pure dubious speculation. Remember, we did the premium list into the cryptoverse.com if you want access to these indicators and whatnot that we talk about on here. And if you want to get access to the risk levels and, and that sort of stuff. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. The premium list stuff can be found in the description below into the cryptoverse.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. Click the bell icon. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.